HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It allows the user to create and structure sections, paragraphs, headings, links, and block quotes for web pages and applications. HTML is not a programming language, meaning it doesn't have the ability to create dynamic functionality. Instead, it makes it possible to organize and format documents, similar to Microsoft Word. When working with HTML, we use simple code structures tags and attributes to mark up a website page. For example, we can create a paragraph by placing the enclosed text within a starting paragraph tag and a closing paragraph tag. Overall, HTML is a markup language that is really straightforward and easy to learn, even for complete beginners in website building. Here's what you'll learn by watching this video. HTML was invented by Tim Berners-Lee, a physicist at the CERN Research Institute in Switzerland. He came up with the idea for, for an internet-based hypertext system. Hypertext means a text that contains references or links to other texts that viewers can access immediately. He published the first version of HTML in 1991, consisting of 18 HTML tags. Since then, each new version of the HTML language comes with new tags and attributes, tag modifiers, to the markup. HTML documents are files that end with a .html or .htm extension. You can view them using any web browser, such as Google Chrome, Safari, or Mozilla Firefox. The browser reads the HTML file and renders its content so that internet users can view it. Usually, the average website includes several different HTML pages. For instance, home pages, about pages, contact pages would all have separate HTML documents. Each, each HTML page consists of a set of tags, also called elements, which you can refer to as the building blocks of web pages. The cre they create a hierarchy that structures the content into sections, paragraphs, headings, and other content blocks. Most HTML elements have an opening and a closing that use the tag syntax. Here you can see an example of code and how HTML elements can be structured. HTML tags have two main types, block level and inline tags. Block level elements take up the full available space and always start a new line in the document. Headings and paragraphs are a great example of block tags. Inline elements only take up as much space as they need and don't start a new line on the page. They usually serve to format the inner contents of block level elements. Links and emphasized strings are good examples of inline tags. Like most things, HTML comes with a handful of strengths and limitations. Pros, a widely used language with lots of resources and a huge community behind it. It runs natively in every browser, comes with a flat learning curve. It is open source and completely free, has a consistent and clean markup. The official web standards are maintained by the World Wide Web Consortium W3C, easily integratable with backend languages such as PHP and Node.js. Cons, mostly used for static websites. For dynamic functionality, you may need to use JavaScript or a backend language such as PHP. It does not allow the user to implement logic. As a result, all web pages need to be created separately, even if they use the same elements, for example, headers and footers. Some browsers adopt new features slowly. Browser behavior is sometimes hard to predict. For example, older browsers don't always render newer tags. Since the first days, HTML has gone through an incredible evolution. W3C constantly publishes new versions and updates, while historical milestones get dedicated names as well. HTML4, these days commonly referred to as HTML, was published in 1999, 
while the latest version of came out in 2014. Named HTML5, the update has introduced many new features to the language. One of the most anticipated features of HTML5 is native support for audio and video embedding. Instead of using Flash Player, we can simply embed videos and audio files into our web pages using the new audio and video tags. It also includes inbuilt support for scalable vector graphics such as SVG and MathML for mathematical and scientific formulas. HTML5 introduced a few semantic improvements as well. The new semantic tags inform browsers about the meaning of content, which benefits both readers and search engines. While HTML is a powerful language, it isn't enough to build a professional and fully responsive website. We can only use it to add text elements and create the structure of the content. However, HTML works extremely well with the two other front-end languages. CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, and JavaScript. Together, they can achieve rich user experience and implement advanced functions. CSS is responsible for styling such as background colors, layouts, spacing, and animations. JavaScript lets you add dynamic functionality such as sliders, pop-ups, and photo galleries. Think of HTML as the skeleton, CSS as the skin, and JavaScript as the muscles. HTML is the main markup language of the web. It runs natively in every browser and is maintained by the World Wide Web Consortium. You can use it to create the content structure of websites and web applications. It is the lowest level of front-end technologies that serves as the basis for styling you can add with CSS and functionality you can implement using JavaScript. That's the end of the video guys. Thank you very much for sticking around till the end. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. If you're interested in learning more about computer science and coding, click the link in my description to my blog where you can expand your knowledge on these topics. See you in the next video.